Greetings and salutations everybody, my name is Maya the King, and yes, I know it's been a while since I put out a video. I addressed why and apologized for it in my first video I did today. Want to know which one that is? It's the Dragon Marked for Death First Impressions. Link will be at the end of the video in case you were wondering. Today we are looking at a game called Help Will Come Tomorrow, a survival game based in Russia. And before we go any further, do me a quick solid and hit that like and subscribe button. You don't have to hit the bell unless you want to be bugged by notifications, but Hitting those other two don't hurt you at all, and they help a small YouTuber out like me a whole lot. Okay? Thanks. Also, a nice comment would be awesome as well, so, you know, keep that in mind. Now then, what of the game? Well, it's a survival game, similar to Dead in Vinland if you played that, or remember me doing a video on that in my past, which I did, so, you know, maybe come take a look at that. It's turn-based, survival simulation, and it's it's pretty good. I, I really enjoy it. I'm gonna keep playing it. But, keeping that in mind, let's take a look at the game as a whole and see if it's worth your time and money, alright? So, first off, the price. I think it's acceptable for a game like this. It has the kind of quality, length, and attention to it that you'd expect for a game around this price tag. It's simple, yet complicated, and of course, it's very hard to survive. It doesn't overcomplicate things, but it does need to have certain aspects so that it can be an effective survival game. It gives you a nice, decent, detailed tutorial and, well, I mean... What do you expect? It's a survival game. Uh, you should know what this is by now. It's turn-based, and it's difficult, so if that's what you're looking for, then great. You'll enjoy this a lot. If it's not, and you thought it was something else, then look elsewhere. I mean, that's pretty much it. But I'll go further into detail about its gameplay mechanics if you'd like some more information. I mean, after all, there's always things out there that can make or break a game for some players, and that might help you to decide whether or not you want to, you know, buy this or not, so let's go deeper. So, first off, the game's overall gameplay mechanics are pretty solid and easy to understand. A lot of steps and a lot of options for certain things, but it's not like it's super confusing. So you can clear snow in sections and then build in those sections, and this is in like your base camp. You can build like a shelter, a palisade, a doctor quarantine zone, and a workbench, and then your fire pit. So these are the main things that you can build in your in your camp, but each thing you build can also be improved upon to help you survive a bit easier. So like you can build a resting area with, you know, made out of leaves, but then you can put like a tent over it, and then you can make blankets, and then you can make pillows, and stuff like that. It has a scavenging mechanic where you send out an expedition of one to two people where they go out and gather supplies. As they gather supplies though, there's a chance of them getting lost out there in the wilderness, so be careful not to use them too much. During expeditions, there are events that can randomly happen in which you need to do a lot of reading and then make a decision which can then affect those explorers or the camp as a whole. There's a plethora of different types of items and supplies that can each do different things, and then there's a, there are different ailments that can affect each person which you'll need to address to help them stay alive. Also, on that map that you use for your expeditions, there are wild animal patrols and bandit patrols that you'll have to avoid or risk getting mauled or killed, so make sure you pay attention when your people are going out and exploring. Then, when back at the camp, you can use the supplies you've gathered to build and customize your base, and keep your people alive by feeding them, watering them, whatever. There are two times you handle business in this game. During the day, where you feed everyone, explore, or craft things. And then there's a nighttime mechanic where everyone sits around the fire and talks with each other. Now this brings up another interesting point in this game, and that's the characters that you have with you when you start. They have different upbringings and opinions that can clash or mesh with the others and making them hate each other, trust each other, or love each other. During the day, people can help each other with building or exploring or scavenging or whatever, and so these relationships are important because it allows them to either work better or work worse. And at night, you can choose different conversation topics to help mold or mesh your relationships, and if you're not careful, ruin them and make things worse. I obviously died on my first playthrough. After having played the tutorial, I was still a little confused and the game was still very difficult and throwing a lot of information at me. But don't feel discouraged. Already after playing through and dying once, I have a much better understanding of how the game plays, and I know I'm going to do a lot better next time. So keep that in mind if you choose to play. It might take you a few tries to figure it out, but when you do, you're going to kind of just know what to do and what's expected of you, so it's easy enough to understand through trial and error. It's basically, you have to experience it to learn it. You know, you have to live it to know what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, for the positives, I mean, it, it has good music, good sound effects, its graphics are pleasant, its gameplay is complicated yet easy to understand through time and dedication. It's definitely a hard game, but it also has various difficulties to make it easier or even more harder for you. 
Its gameplay is addictive, and its ideas are interesting so as to make you care about your people or what they're going through or what they've been through or whatever. And it's a pretty good turn-based survival game, definitely something I can see myself playing for like the next week until I finally manage to beat it. But for the bad? Well, in some cases it kind of seems a bit half-assed. Like, there's no voice acting, even in the beginning cutscene. It would have been nice, but it's not a deal breaker. The tutorial kinda throws a whole lot at you and forces you to really pay attention, which can be a bit much for first time players. Sometimes the English grammar isn't so good. Maybe this was translated, I'm not so sure, but it definitely has its issues here and there regarding its English. And some things just don't really make much sense to me, like, no way to get water yet, my people are dying of thirst, so how do I get water? The game didn't specify, or maybe it did, and I just missed it in all the text it threw at me. Also, it's very slow paced, with a lot of pointless action that for someone like me who enjoys this kind of stuff will appreciate, but people who are just looking for a simple survival game won't enjoy, like getting to know the characters, making sure they like each other, and getting lost while on an expedition. That's definitely an acquired taste, and there's probably a few people out there who aren't gonna just they're not going to gravitate towards this kind of, you know, personalization, I guess. Or they're not going to gravitate towards so much complicated, you know, mechanics and, and in-depth stuff to the game. A lot of people are probably going to love it, don't get me wrong. But, you know, there's going to be those people who just don't really go towards this kind of thing. I just want to make sure that everyone knows that, you know, that's out there. But overall, I don't really have too many negatives about the game. Uh, I mean, at least not right now. I only played around half an hour. Uh, I intend to play much, much more. But, you know, this is just a first impressions video, and for a first impressions video, I can tell you that so far, in my first half hour of playing and dying, the game looks pretty good, feels pretty good, it's got a lot of potential, delivers pretty much exactly what it it says it's going to deliver on the Steam Store page, so, you know, if this is something that you were interested in or looking forward to, then have no fear, it'll satisfy that particular itch for you. But... If you're looking for something a bit easier, simpler, more fast-paced, maybe a little, you know, more fun, friendly, and whatnot, you know, this isn't going to be for you. Also, uh, if this is your first time playing a game, a survival game like this, probably not the best place to start either. In fact, go play Dead in Vinland first, alright? I'm going to put it on screen now so you know how to type it in and look for it, alright? Here it is. It's going to be right here, right there, right at the bottom. See it? You see it? Okay, good. I loved this game. Uh, Dead in Vinland. I love that game. And this game is a lot like that one. And if you haven't played Dead in Vinland, I highly recommend you go play it. It's amazing. And that one is... is Dead in Vinland is way easier to get into and get started when you try to play this type of game. So if you want to get introduced to these type of survival turn-based games, definitely start with that one first. There might even be an easier one or better one out there that I don't know about, so if you know about it, hey, let me know. I love these kind of games. So after you finish Dead in Vinland, come back to this one and it'll be a piece of cake. This one, it's not going to hold your hand, okay? It will destroy you. It will destroy everything that you, you plan and hope for and, and prepared for. It'll, it's hard. It's very difficult. Alright, i got to go back and i got to try to save these little bastards because they just, they're being idiots. Okay, I mean, who acts like that when they're in a survival situation? Who's literally just like, no, I refuse to take water from you because you're an aristocrat? It's like, okay, then you can die, dumbass. Fine, die. Well, I, whatever. Just whatever. Just be prepared for that kind of level of bullshit and for the hard difficulties coming your way and you'll be alright. But overall, I really like this game. I happily endorse it and I recommend you survival fans out there, give it a, a, a thorough, you know, checking out. Definitely take a look at this game. Give it a minute of your time. It deserves it and if you give it just half an hour to an hour, if you don't like it after an hour, you can always return it. But that'll give you a legitimate deep dive into the game to really let you know what the game's all about and then make a decision. Alright? So thank you all so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was able to help some of you or inform some of you or, you know, maybe, I don't know, just help some of you. I guess that, whatever, whatever. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you on my next adventure. This is the worst ending ever, and I apologize. But thank you so much for stopping by. Check this game out, and check out Dead in Vinland. All right? Okay. Thank you. Until my next adventure, I bid you farewell.